Hello, it's John Heaton, and um, today I'm going to talk about the Wildlife Archive release, um, which came out December 7th, the same day as Red Rose Speedway. I didn't get it at the time, didn't come to Hungary, but I, I ordered it uh, for delivery in the UK over Christmas, and it came, and it's beautifully packaged. It really is. Uh, there's a lot of love gone into this packaging, which was perhaps missing from the original album, uh, not, not least the back cover. A uh, beautiful picture of Paul with the doves there, a lot superior to the cheap looking cover that was on the original album. And then we got a beautiful gatefold with pictures of the band and uh, the familiar archive collection strip down here. It's really nice to have this and Red Rose Speedway on archive. And uh, the CD as well to go with it. Um, uh, great. Um, the record's a little bit hard to get out of the sleeves, I noticed, and to get back in, actually. Uh, but very nice to have the original labels and on that beautiful 180 gram vinyl. Uh, the bonus material on here is a little bit disappointing. That's probably because there wasn't too much available. I mean, there was a lot of live stuff in 72 done which was put onto the Red Rose Speedway package and also the big the bus box set which has a 72 live concert. Uh, interesting labels here again on the bonus disc. So all we've got and you can't really have a stripped down version of Wildlife because it's already stripped down. Um, so a lot of albums, other albums where you could you can put out alternate takes which sound interesting because they've got you know minus the strings or whatever in the case of Wildlife, it's pretty much a back to basics album. So there's no alternate takes on the bonus material. And uh, the bonus material is mainly, mainly made up of um, home recordings, um, which are of varying interest. Um, Dear Friend, a couple of nice home recordings of that. And uh, Hey Diddle, home recording, I Am Your Singer, interesting home recording, but I'm not going to listen to them too many times, I don't suppose. Um, Bit Bop home recording, Good Rocking Tonight home recording. Nice track called When the Wind Is Blowing, that was quite interesting. And the Great Cock and Seagull Race already appeared on Ram um, on the, as a bonus track. Um, I think the most interesting part of the bonus material here is the Give Ireland Back to the Irish single, which has uh, been masterfully reproduced and uh, it's a bit of forgotten um, milestone in Paul's career because it was the, probably the one and only time that he was really political. And also um, him and John were feeling the same way and putting out songs on the same subjects at the same time. So I think it's an important song in Paul's um, repertoire in his catalogue. And I think, I think I'm right in saying when they put out one of the recent compilations, he, he wanted to put this one out on there. I can't remember if it was Wingspan or um, Pure McCartney, but uh, he was asked not to put it on by the record company because the government might get upset. But uh, I mean, this is, this is many, many years ago. This song was put out. I don't think it's going to ruffle any feathers now to put out a, a new version of it. And I think they've, they've rightly put it out now. Um, so that's the archive collection. Um, as we know, the, the reviews of this album were pretty negative at the time. I'm not going to review the album again because I've already done that on my channel a couple of years ago. We know that Carr and Tyler slagged it off. We know Rolling Stone, uh, I think they called it the nadir in the decomposition of rock music thus far, um, which is pretty nasty. Enemy called it really tepid and showed McCartney's credibility sinking fast. Uh, even in the uncut... Uh, you know, the McCartney ultimate guide. Uh, they're, they're not completely dismissive of it. Um, but they, one of them, one of the reviewers from the Melody Maker at the time, a dream album for airline hostesses, but there's too many maracas and not enough balls. But, you know, having said that, they give, they give Mumbo four stars, Wildlife four stars, and Dear Friend four stars. And then they give the rest of the album two stars apart from Bitbop and Love is Strange which they give three stars so 
It's quite annoying. That Uncut have a habit of rewarding the rockier or the so-called more adventurous tracks and anything which smacks of sentimentality or just you know a, a, a love song they tend to dismiss and so they've basically dismissed the first three songs on side two of wildlife as two stars which i think is a bit of a disgrace but uh uh it's not my opinion some people never know i think is an absolute gem in paul's catalog but anyway it's all subjective um so david frick has done a little video on the official paul mccartney channel he was asked to compile uh, the liner notes for the the box set and he's a well-known Rolling Stone journalist uh, he's interviewed all kinds of people over the over the years like Lou Reed and Kurt Cobain um, and he was saying how much he enjoyed the album so it's not at all you can't generalize and say the critics hated it because uh, if someone like David Frick is uh, is standing up for the album then that says something in my opinion and a lot of the fans have come back to this and reappraised it. And I know it's not everyone's cup of tea and some people think it's rough around the edges and it is rough around the edges, but that's part of its charm. Um, so I just want to talk about the, also the great YouTube videos which have just been made available uh, recently. Um, I'm not sure how long they'll be up there before they get taken down, but they come from the Red Rose Speedway archive box set release and there is the Bruce McNaus show and there's lots of videos stroke live recordings uh, including Eat at Home and a couple of tracks from Wildlife I Am Your Singer fascinating live version of that and Wildlife similarly I'm not sure if it's a live version or a kind of whether they're miming to a backing track um, but it's got nice footage of live animals worth checking out that and uh, an interesting nice little live version of Bitbop um, plus live versions of Mary Had a Little Lamb, Hi Hi Hi, My Love, Maybe I'm Amazed, and then The Mess, which seems to me to be playing over a backing track. It sounds too polished to be a live performance, but I might be wrong. That, that version on YouTube seems uh, very polished indeed. If it is live, it's a great performance. Uh, Big Barn Bed, again I think is playing over a backing track but really nice to have a video for Big Barn Bed. Um, Maria Had a Little Lamb it seems to be live. Um, so those and then there's little bits that basically they've uploaded each song separately on YouTube so you can't watch the whole thing uh, and there's little bits with the animated mouse Bruce McMouse in it which are a bit silly but they're quite fun I suppose um, but the main reason for watching it is obviously for the music. Um, Somehow that got dropped and put in the can and left in the can for 35 years. Uh, maybe with Band on the Run coming out, uh, it got forgotten or deemed irrelevant. But I think it's great that we have things like this coming out after all these years. Um, yeah, so really enjoyed that. And also, as, uh, as a couple of viewers have pointed out, Let It Be uh, is also available in totality on YouTube. I watched bits of it this morning and uh, the quality is not brilliant, but for those of you who haven't seen the movie, then check that out while well, that's still up there, because I'm not sure how long that'll last. Um, what else to say about this album? Uh, influenced by Bob Dylan in terms of put together very quickly, and uh, Paul wanted to try something of that nature, and he was normally the opposite in the studio. He would slave over a song for three or four days to get it perfect, and probably piss off the other Beatles in the process, but here he just went in and laid down the tracks and I think you know it is unpolished maybe they didn't even get a good mix in some on some occasions but then the emotion is cut is captured and a track like wildlife you know you hear Paul's vocal even though the lyrics are not great the power of his vocal performance is sensational uh, he's almost mimicking, mimicking uh, Lennon plastic owner band type sort of hoarse uh, almost screaming vocal and it's very effective um, so that was that. I would just say in summary that this album is, is uh, as I think one review said, a good deal less posturing than some of John and George's uh, recent solo releases. So that may be true. I think it's unpretentious, it's uncontrived. Those are words that spring to mind. Uh, not pompous or self-important. Uh, I think only the first solo album, McCartney, is comparable in terms of a stripped down, unpretentious, au naturel, sound and uh, 
There's no attempt to produce a hit single here. Uh, I have seen bit bop on a single, a European single, I think, quite a rare edition, but in England certainly there was no single. There's no glossy or clever production tricks. There's no mini operas like Uncle Albert on here. It's just homegrown love songs for the most part. And uh, just reminds you of relaxing in the idyllic English or Scottish countryside, really. And uh, I think Paul was down on this album and, and he said in an interview, I used to really hate this album. And then I met this guy who wound down the window of his car and just said to me, I'm going up into the mountains and I'm taking this album with me, Paul, and it's the best album ever and I love it. So that changed Paul's opinion of it. That was quite interesting. So I think he's come round, I think hopefully Paul's come round to reappraising that this part of his catalogue, even if the critics slagged it off, the fans mostly love it. And um, what else can I say? Uh, the Wings Harmony Singing, That's, this is where it all started. Uh, you can hear it on Tomorrow, you can hear it on the title track Wildlife. The superb combination of Paul McCartney, Linda McCartney and Denny Lane, which they were to carry with them throughout the 70s to great effect and it's first heard here. So that's another thing worth mentioning. So there's a lot, lot to enjoy from this album Wildlife uh, and particularly with the new packaging. It looks better than ever. Thank you for watching. See you next time.